the channel catfish, Ictolaris punctatus. Now you guys can see me catch a lot of these lately and some rather large ones. Uh, so I thought it only fitting to do another episode in the Think You Know Fish series about the most numerous and sought after catfish species in the U.S. It is estimated that some 8 million anglers suit up every year in pursuit of this fish. They are mostly considered good table fare and relatively easy to catch. Common baits include things like small cut bait, bait fish smaller than 6 inches or so, uh, red worms, night crawlers, and other insects. However, this fish has a tendency to eat things like hot dogs, chicken breasts, as well as an assortment of stink baits. It really makes this fish a really opportunistic feeder and a favorite amongst newer anglers to target. They arose some 20 million years ago during the Miocene. This is another descendant of the Green River catfish that gave rise to the blue catfish and the flathead catfish as well. Uh, these fish are native to the Mississippi River drainage, as are most fish we've covered so far. You can see here from our friends over at the United States Geological Survey that these things have a rather robust native distribution and they've also been introduced to a lot of other fisheries as well. In almost every case this was intentional and these things really aren't considered invasive uh, in very many places. Uh, they've purposefully been established uh, throughout Southeast Asia, Europe, Brazil, and parts of Russia. However, there is one area that considers them to be invasive, the Columbia, Willamette and the Snake Rivers in Washington and Oregon. Oh, and I almost forgot there is one other area, uh, Arizona. Uh, Arizona is very proud of its Razorback Suckers and the Chiricahua Leopard Frog, which are both seeing declining numbers due to the Channel Cats. I just want to back up for a second. The Razorback Sucker and the Chiricahua Leopard Frog. I mean... Who came up with those names? I mean, that's like the the most badass name you could give a frog and a sucker fish. Um, hats off to you, Arizona. So let's talk about their spawn, shall we? Uh, in most areas of the country, channel cats spawn in the early summer in water temps, 68 to 70 degrees. This is when channels move into the spawning areas and, and prepare their nests. Uh, actual spawning takes place in about 70 to 75 degree water, however. If you're looking to add channel cats to a pond or wondering if they will even spawn at all in one, uh, many people don't believe channel cats will or can spawn in ponds. Uh, channel cats will absolutely spawn in ponds and lakes. They often seek out natural holes or crevices. Uh, like most catfish, they're considered cavity spawners. Oftentimes in small ponds, property owners have a hard time uh, getting them to spawn. That could be true due to the lack of structure necessary for them to do so safely. Uh, tires, for example, make excellent spawning habitat. Uh, you can actually drill holes in the top and bottom of the, of the tire so it sinks and lays down on the bottom and it, it makes an excellent place for channel cats to spawn. However, there is one other possibility as to why you're not seeing any of those little channel cat fry or fingerlings. It's pretty simple. They're all being eaten. That's right, all of them. Uh, channel cat fry are not equipped with the most sound strategy when it comes to survival. Uh, a lot of other bait fish basically just seek cover. Uh, sometimes they ball up in numbers and they sort of a, a safety in numbers sort of mentality. Uh, however, cover is their main mode of defense. Well, this isn't necessarily the case with channel cats where they will seek cover second but ball up first. Uh, and they don't particularly hold super tight to thick cover, uh, which makes them really easy targets for predation. Females vary widely in the number of eggs they lay, anywhere from 3,000 to 50,000. Uh, three to five-year-old channel cats lay the most. They lay the most fertile and the largest eggs, and their eggs also have the greatest survival rate. Eggs hatch in six to 10 days, depending on water temperature. Males guard the fry for several days before he dips, and they're on their own. Very few of them make it. Largemouth bass especially ensure this in ponds and lake environments. However, it's not limited to them. All sunfish species contribute to this. The reason why channel cats are uh, considered excellent pond mates with other fish, especially predatory fish, is because, uh, well, let me back up. Uh, oftentimes when we look at food chains, we, we sort of look at them in a very linear fashion, as if they are going in one direction. Small fish get eaten by bigger fish, get eaten by bigger fish, get eaten by even bigger fish. 
the reality is the biggest fish on the spectrum actually feed uh, everything else. <clears throat> For example, when a channel cat lays 50,000 eggs and those fry grow relatively quickly, that is a huge food source for everything that lives in your pond or lives in your lake. These things are an excellent forage species, or rather they create forage uh, for everything else. So it's very important that you have species like channel cats in ponds and lakes. I mean, it's not absolutely vital, but it does help tremendously with the amount of forage that everything else has to eat. Because let's face it, I mean, everything eats channel cat fry, uh, bluegills, red ears, crappies, largemouth bass, everything, including other channel cats. So it's very important to, to see those big fish, not as fish that are feeding on your little fish, but are actually feeding your little fish, right? Growth rates and age. Now, most of you probably are not concerned with the growth rates in 10 year old wild channel cats, uh, which can vary widely. So I'm not even gonna bother with that. Uh, however, channels stocked in ponds on a feeding program can exhibit some insane growth statistics. For example, uh, channel cats stocked as fingerlings four to six inches on a regular robust feeding program can grow two pounds in the first year. That's insane. Uh, this is why you see channels and not blues or flatheads used in aquaculture all over the world. Their eater size is reached in just a year or two. Uh, it takes blues two to three times that long and flatheads even longer. Uh, however, if you don't feed them, it can take two to three years to reach two pounds. But that's still pretty fast growing for a catfish, really. Uh, optimum growth occurs in about 85 degree water. As far as their age range goes, I found a lot of conflicting data. Uh, one study even made the claim that they can live up to 40 years. Uh, I won't dispute that outliers exist and one could live that long, uh, but most studies concluded that 12 to 20 years was the average. So the other topic that I wanted to cover uh, about the channel cat is, uh, I wouldn't say it's up for debate because no one's really debating it, but maybe this will start a little bit of a conversation. Um, and that is, will we ever see another world record? Up until fairly recently, my answer was and always has been no. I did not think that it was remotely possible. Uh, videos out there by large content creators, uh, people like uh, Dieter Melhorn, for example, talk specifically about the likelihood of us um, of this occurring. Uh, but he, the way he speaks about it is if that ship has already sailed years ago, especially uh, with the introduction of blue cats and flatheads. Uh, into traditionally channel cat dominated waters. This mirrored my thoughts exactly and I had no reason to question it. Uh, in other words, it was a foregone conclusion. And I think that was pretty much shared by the entire catfish community. But then one day I realized that I broke my own rule. I never even peeked at the data. I drew a conclusion based on consensus and not science. So what happened when I looked at it? Well, before I go any further, I just want to thank you, all of you guys uh, who have subscribed to my channel. And if you would, leave a comment down below and tell me what you think uh, about the chances of catching a new world record or anything like that that has to do with channel cats. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, I just want to thank you guys all again, really. I just hit 400 subscribers and it was a great feeling and I really appreciate it. And I'm going to have a lot more content for you guys. So let's keep going. So after I looked at it, so what happened when I looked at the data? I was expecting to see some big channels in the books, old books, like old records. They weren't that old. 20 states have had their channel cat records broke in the past two decades, 20. Out of those 20, four of them eclipsed 40 pounds. Two of those fish eclipsed 50 pounds, 50 pound channel cats. The largest of the two being 55 pound fish caught in 2008 in Red River, Louisiana. Not to be confused with the Red River in North Dakota. 
which is considered to be the mecca of channel catfishing in the entire world. Uh, 20s and 30s are routinely caught there. But let me back up for a minute so you understand the significance of these fish. South Carolina, W.H. Whaley, 1964, 58 pounds. That is the current all-tackle world record channel cap. In 2008, that record was challenged by what turned out to be a 55-pound fish. In essence, three pounds was a thread by which a seemingly immortal record was hanging. You guys draw your own conclusions. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Uh, you guys are awesome. I'm going to keep cranking out the content for you. I don't see myself ever stopping doing this. I really appreciate all of the viewership that I've gotten so far. And you guys are freaking amazing. And I'm going to keep going. So if you would, leave a comment down below. Tell me what kind of fish you'd like to learn about. And I'll make it happen. So until next time, go catch a big fish. Thank you.